We're tired. Autistic people aren't, aren't you tired? Bottom line, listen to autistic people. Listen to autistic people. Actually autistic people. Listen to autistic adults. Listen to us. You want to help us? Listen to us. And with that being said, if you're not autistic, stop talking about autism. Just stop talking about autism. <sighs> Whew. It's maybe one of those uh, spill the tea moments, but uh, I think whiskey seems more appropriate. Hi everyone, my name is Mae Marvell. I'm an artist and a writer, currently living in Portland, Oregon, and I'm also autistic. We're tired. Autistic people aren't, aren't you tired? We are we are so tired of having to come out here and explain everything. And in particular, we are so tired of having to justify our existence. We're tired of having to defend against charities that want to rid us from existence or having to deal with really offensive stereotypical representations of us in movies. We're tired. We're so tired. And right after the whole Sia controversy, now we gotta come back out here again and explain it all again. Ugh. All right. So here's what this is about. Mark Rover who is, from my understanding, a former NASA engineer and is now a YouTuber. Um, I did not know who he was until yesterday um, when this whole controversy um, kind of came about or came into, um, into light for me. Uh, so Mark has an autistic son and he put out a YouTube video uh, promoting this fundraiser with a ton of different celebrities involved and everything promoting it to raise money for next for autism. So I know what you're thinking. Mark has an autistic son. He's raising money for an organization that is going to be beneficial for his son. It's going to be a good organization that for once is actually going to help autistic people. <sighs> no. No. Of course not. Of course it's not. <laughs> Next for Autism is just another organization that is way more focused on eradicating us from society and harming us with abusive therapy than it is actually listening to or helping our community. One of um, the most difficult things for me about this is actually watching Mark's video about his son. Um, one, it's difficult because you can really tell that, I mean, he cares about his son, obviously, but he is just not listening to the right people. Um, really, the bigger issue of this is no one's listening to autistic people, and we'll dive more into that momentarily. But um, the cringiest part for me... There's a lot of normal functioning people who are critical and seek to tear... All right, normal functioning people? Mark, stop. No, stop. Stop. What is normal? Define normal for me. My brain is neurodivergent. I am autistic. My brain is wired differently than you as a neurotypical person. It doesn't make me not normal. Stop saying normal. Stop. Stop. My son will never be the star of his little league team. He won't be the first person to step foot on Mars, nor will he invent the cure to cancer. But by the best Okay. Okay. No, no, what? How are you out here saying those things about your son acting like he has all these limitations? Just because your son perceives the world differently than you do, he communicates differently than you do, he feels and expresses, expresses emotions differently than you do, does not make him any less capable. And the thought that it does, 
is harmful and it's ableist. My son will never be the star of his Little League team. He won't be the first person to set foot on Mars, nor will he find the cure for cancer. Mark. Of course he's not. If he has you as a father putting your limiting beliefs on him, is it just because he does not communicate in the same way that you think that he can't do these things? Did we not just learn about Carly and her amazing abilities once they put a computer in front of her? Just gave her something that she could communicate with. Some of the most brilliant minds in the world are autistic. They're engineers. They're scientists. They're doctors. They're lawyers. They're so smart. Do you not realize? Your son can do anything. He can do anything he wants to. You should be telling him he can do anything he wants to. It doesn't matter that he's autistic. You can help give him the support and the accommodations and the things he needs to be successful and to do whatever he wants to do. Maybe he does want to find the cure for cancer. Fuck yeah, he can do it. Like, I just... This was the worst part of the whole video for me. I mean, aside from the obviously supporting a charity that's terrible, this was, this was tough for me. And it's tough for me, it's tough for me because I just, I don't like, I don't like that he's putting these, these limiting beliefs on his son, like acting like his son couldn't achieve anything he wants. Like that's just a really cringy moment for me. And I feel like when parents, get stuck listening to organizations that aren't listening to autistic people they they just get a really fucked up view of what autism is um what it can be how it can affect their child I, there's listen to autistic adults please we have so much to say and we want to help you and your autistic children we really do we a hundred that is our that is what we want. We're not out to make money or have any other kind of agenda like some organization, actually autistic adults. We wanna share our experiences, our thoughts and opinions with you, and we wanna help you. And we wanna help your autistic children, and we wanna help you all navigate this, and we wanna help you understand this. Any diagnosis of any kind, it can be scary and confusing and there can be so much misinformation out there about it. I get it. I get it. It's hard to get swept up in the wrong thing and be listening to the wrong information and to be, you know, there's therapists out there who are like, ABA is an abuse. And you're like, okay, they say it's good. They say it's change. They say it's... And you don't know any better. Um, and it's, it's tough. It's, I can't imagine being a parent trying to navigate such... A complicated issue especially when there's so much misinformation out there so it's just really important if if you're a parent of an autistic child that you do a ton of research and really understand what organizations are actually there to benefit your child um, and which want to eradicate them from existence or harm them with some kind of abusive therapy the rest of the video and I don't know Mark Rober from anything besides this video I, I just don't um, but from this video, it is very clear he loves and cares about his son so, so much. So much. So I'm not... This anger might be mildly misdirected. I don't know. It's not totally your fault, Mark. But the issue is, and what the issue always comes down to, is no one's listening to autistic people. Mark is following organizations like Next for Autism and Autism Speaks and, you know... Autism Speaks loves to use fear mongering and make parents feel like their children are, are defective and a huge burden and uh, potentially even dangerous and they're never gonna amount to anything. They'll steal all your money. And I, watch the I Am Autism video they put out. Just, just watch, just watch it. So let's learn a little bit about Next for Autism. Um, while they do have autistic advisors, they have absolutely no autistic people on their actual board of directors. Why is this important? <sighs> autistic children <laughs> grow up to be autistic adults. And don't you think that we would be the best people 
to really vocalize what helps, what harms, what we would have wanted more of, where we could use support, how things could be adapted or adjusted for us. Don't you think that we would be the best to know? Next for Autism partners closely with Autism Speaks. As many of you know, or maybe don't know, Autism Speaks is a hate group. Their goal has been to eradicate autism. In their mission statement up until as recently as 2016, it was in their mission statement to cure autism. They have been all about trying to eradicate us. Autism Speaks is one of the most well-known autism organizations, but actually doesn't do almost anything to help autistic people. Only 1% of Autism Speaks budget actually goes to family services. 1%. They spend 20 times that a year on fundraising alone. You can see openly on Next for Autism's website that they repeatedly partner with Autism Speaks and even in their frequently asked questions section, they admit that they do. If you also want to look back at some of their tax returns, since they are a nonprofit, their records are public. Um, in 2018 alone, they donated $170,000 to Autism Speaks. In the same year, they donated over $1.1 million to a whole list of organizations that support abusive ABA therapy. So Autism Next openly supports uh, ABA therapy, um, applied behavior analysis therapy. Um, what's wrong with ABA therapy? Why is it so bad? If you talk to any actually autistic adult, many of whom have been through this therapy, you will hear pretty much nothing but horror stories. Um, stories of abuse, lasting trauma, PTSD, to this day. Founder of ABA therapy, O. Lavar Lavis, I'm probably saying that incorrectly, um, he developed ABA therapy using a series of electric shocks um, on autistic children, uh, the goal being to use a combination of love and pain um, to shape their behavior, to make them appear more normal, um, less autistic, essentially, uh, to try to encourage them to hide their autistic traits. It is very worth noting that this guy who created ABA therapy also used the same ideologies and methods to create gay conversion therapy, which we all know is incredibly harmful to anyone who has to take part in it. This type of therapy only attempts to address the child's behaviors and encourage them to suppress their natural autistic tendencies, such as encouraging you to suppress your child's stims, like hand flapping or spinning or bouncing your leg. Stimming is a natural form of self-regulation and no one should be punished for that or made to suppress to, do, to, to not do that, to not express themselves in the way that is natural to them and that they need to. What ABA so terribly fails to do is actually address the needs of the child themselves. ABA is not designed to consider your child's feelings, wants, needs, or emotions. And why would you want that for them? Can't you see that there's something wrong with a program that is trying to systematically shape your child into some predetermined mold? Or showing them the right way to play, as if there even is such a thing. How about 40 plus hours of therapy a week on top of school, teaching you to endure stress without ever being able to express emotions in the way that you feel, in the way that is natural to you? As autistic people, we communicate differently. We perceive the world differently. We feel and express emotions differently. But there's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing to be corrected. It's seriously about time that celebrities take a step back and take some serious accountability for the organizations and causes that they choose to support. Like it or not, as celebrities, you wield an absurd amount of power. Fans will blindly follow whatever you say or do or support simply because they like you. That's why it's so important that you properly research and vet organizations that you're going to slap your name on. If you don't, you may end up investing in an abusive therapy or eugenics program like these celebrities. And for reference, eugenics is the study of how to arrange reproduction within human population to increase the occurrence of heritably desirable characteristics. The Kittler. 
So, let me ask you, Mark Rover, Jimmy Kimmel, John Stewart, Conan O'Brien, Chris Rock, Adam Sandler, Stephen Colbert, John Oliver, Jack Black, Andy Samberg, Paul Rudd, Maya Rudolph, Mr. Beast, Zach Galifianakis, Mark Hamill, Sarah Silverman, Terry Crews, Marquise Brown Lee, Rhett and Link and more? You all support a company that promotes abusive ABA therapy and donates money to companies that their sole purpose is to research to how to identify us in the womb so eventually mothers will no longer have autistic babies. It's called eugenics, kids. Eugenics. Are autistic lives really that much of an inconvenience that you feel the need to eradicate us from society? Autism is a different way of thinking. Our brains are wired differently. We perceive the world differently. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. The bigger issue is the fact that the world around us is not really set up for us and no one wants to make any accommodations. We all the time are expected to acclimate to the neurotypical world, to change our communication styles, our ways of expressing ourselves to match what the neurotypicals want. Why can no one at least meet us halfway? Why are we constantly being told every couple of months that our existence is a huge inconvenience? Why every couple of months do we have to get out here and defend our right to be alive, to be here, to tell you that we're valid? Next for Autism is not an organization that actually wants to help autistic people. They seem to me very similar to Autism Speaks in that they're really good at their marketing and they market towards the parents of autistic people which would be fine if they were actually listening to autistic people behind the scenes and really starting to understand what we want and need and really don't need like eugenics. I think there's a big problem with celebrities trying to do good but not bothering to do any of the actual research to see if what they're doing is actually good. Honestly, you could pay someone, an assistant or someone, I guarantee, to do like this much research on Google to figure out if an organization is actually good or not. It didn't take me long looking into Next for Autism to learn that they were trash. It didn't take long at all. You can absolutely have someone look into the charities that you're going to support before you slap your name on them. Why are you not doing that? There's literally no reason not to and it's, it's not okay. Celebrities need to take some accountability here. Like it or not, you have such huge influence and I wish you didn't. I really wish you didn't because every time you guys stand up, open your mouths, have something to say about autism, you spread misinformation. You spread hate. You donate to horrible organizations. You spread stereotypes. I, I can't. Honestly, what I want to say, what I really want to say is that if you're not autistic, Shut the f up about autism. Shut up. No one wants to hear what you have to say. Where you need to be looking for information about autism for your child, for you, every, is from organizations or people who are listening to or who are actually autistic. Wouldn't that, it just, it's so black and white to me that just seems like the best resource, the best course of action. Like, why are we not naturally doing this? I, I don't. This whole thing feels insanely tone deaf on the heels of the SIA controversy. After all that, there were a lot of celebrities saying, oh, we really do want to help. We really do want to listen. Then why aren't you listening? Why are you still not listening? If you want to help marginalized groups, help marginalized groups. And you know how that starts? That starts by listening to us. I don't understand why this is so difficult for people to understand. If you want to know what a group of people really needs, why wouldn't you listen to them? If you want to know what someone needs support with, ask them what they need support with. And it's not to say that one or a group of autistic adults could possibly speak for every autistic person, but don't you think it's important that on the board of directors of these organizations that there is a majority of autistic people? It doesn't make any sense to claim to be helping a group of people but to then never actually listen to them. If you listen to actually autistic people for two seconds, you would learn really quickly that we don't want to be cured. 
we're not a disease. Our existence is valid. Our way of thinking is valid. We're valid. It's important right now for all of us who are autistic and are able to be verbal and speak, to speak out now, to be loud and to make a lot of noise before April 30th. Even if you're not autistic, actually, especially if you're non-autistic, it's really important for you to make a lot of noise too. Share actually autistic voices and opinions. Elevate them on your platform. Use your voice to help share our voices because we are not being listened to. I just, you have to take some responsibility. You have to. You can't just be a celebrity acting like you're out here to do good, like Sia saying she's making music to help the autistic community. That woman did nothing but harm the autistic community with her movie and then all her rhetoric on Twitter that was just nasty. And now it's like this guy, Mark, who obviously loves his son and wants the best for him and wants to help him and clearly is misinformed and has a bunch of misinformed celebrities on the bandwagon. Do some research. Continue to raise the money. Hold the event. Don't stop. I, I want to raise money for actually autistic people, but I don't want it to go to a program that is going to promote and donate money to abusive ABA. I don't want it to go to a company that is going to promote and donate money to other companies whose sole focus is to eradicate autistic people from the population. I don't want that. We don't want that. Autistic people don't want that. We don't need that. So if there is one takeaway from this, it is to start listening to actually autistic people. That's it. Listen to autistic people. We have things to say. We have so much to say. If you want to create an organization that helps autistic people, listen to autistic people. Involve in autistic people, please, in every step of the process. If you are someone that wants to donate to an organization that actually helps autistic people, do a little research. Honestly, it's like people who donate to Autism Speaks, it does not take much research to learn that they're a horrible organization. Um, I will list down below some good, safe um, autism organizations that actually help autistic people. I also want to list a couple of um, autistic creators that I really like um, that share a lot of really good information that you should definitely follow if you want to learn more um, about autism. If you have any uh, creators, uh, businesses run by autistic people, any information, anything you want to share or people that, you know, we should be listening to, please share that in the comments below. I would love um, to check out some other creators. I would also love the opportunity to help to promote some businesses uh, run by autistic people. So any, anyone you want to share, throw it in the comments below and I'll definitely... I wonder if once we all start coming out and tweeting at Mark Rober and Jimmy Kimmel and everything, if they're gonna tell us to like shut up and really freak out like Sia did. I, I feel like, <laughs> I don't think they would do that. I feel like we're gonna get ignored. I feel like we're gonna get super duper ignored and this charity is going to raise a ton of money and still no one's gonna listen. And in a couple of months, someone else is gonna come out and do some other thing where they're promoting eugenics again and we're just gonna have to